Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming. Uh, also, uh, invite uh, the people who have joined in online. Uh, it's my pleasure to in introduce my friend, uh, Dr. Mishkin Ingawale, who is the co-founder and CEO slash janitor of Biosense Technologies, a medical device venture focused on low-cost point-of-care non-invasive diagnostics. The Biosense team developed and is currently commercializing TouchB, an award-winning innovative handheld anemia scanner that estimates blood hemoglobin and other vitals without needle pricks, and UCheck, a smartphone-based urine analysis system. Mishkin has a background in consulting with uh, McKinsey and Company and an engineering research background from MIT. His PhD was in area of Wikipedia and network theory from IIM Calcutta. His work has featured at various academic and industry conferences as well as public forums such as TED. And uh, once he makes his presentation, you can ask any questions. I request you to use your mic, put the mic on and if you ask questions so that other people will be able to listen to your question as well. And uh, then put the mic off to avoid uh, the noise. Okay. Thank you. And now I invite uh, Dr. Mishkin to make his presentation. Thanks, Hemant. So good afternoon to all of you. Thanks for uh, uh, taking the time today. Uh, I hope we can have a very interactive uh, dialogue. What I'm going to tell you uh, is a little bit about uh, two technologies which my team has been uh, developing over the last three years and hopefully uh, narrate some of the interesting points in our journey, in our story. And then uh, even I think more uh, what I'm looking forward to is having uh, the discussion, the dialogue with you and figure out uh, what are the possibilities ahead for, uh, for, for some interesting applications in, of these two technologies. So without further ado, I'll just jump straight into uh, the story. So this is a scene from yesterday. This is my colleague, Dr. Abhishek Sen, uh, testing uh, a, a version of UCheck, which is a urine, anal urine analysis system which works with a smartphone. A little bit more on that. But uh, the backdrop is this is now our office based in, in Mumbai. We uh, recently raised a round of uh, venture funding for the kind of work which we are doing. And uh, the, the way we got here is something which uh, I, I hope there are many other uh, organizations in India who can, who can, uh, you know, uh, who, are, who are already doing something like this. So I'll tell you the story. This is me. I, let me introduce myself. My, uh, uh, like Hemant very kindly pointed out, uh, I have uh, a background in uh, engineering as well as management. My uh, co-founders in, in the venture, uh, other doctors, engineers, and designers, they have similar kind of backgrounds. And I think young India in general has many such people where you you would have. Oh, sure, sure, thank you. So, you would have, uh, say, Abhishek here. He is a doctor and a biomedical engineer. He has a background in uh, research in diagnostic devices. Uh, Yogesh here is from IIT Bombay and also has a medical background. Uh, we have Aman Midha, who is our designer, uh, who has a background in product design from a large uh, from Tata Motors. And uh, Darshan, one of the founders as well, from Stanford India Biodesign and Ames. So, this, this team of young people essentially three years ago, we were in a place uh, where uh, we were you know, doing a job and so forth and trying to figure out what to do next in life. But it so happened that Abhishek and Yogesh, these two fellows uh, uh, ended up leading a, down a path which may, became Touch B. Uh, the, it's a medical device, handheld, I have it here, one of these here. Uh, what it does is, and I, I will discuss a little bit more of the technology details uh, soon. But what it does in a nutshell is it measures uh, hemoglobin in blood without pricking, without needles. So you put it in your hand like a pulse oximeter and it measures uh, using, using a, it, an optical principle. So uh, the, way, the way our story unfolded is that we had, uh, well, Abhishek and Yogesh to be, uh, to be uh, precise, they had an experience uh, working in places like Parol. So during their uh, medical internships, they had done their stints at different uh, PHCs, primary health centers across Maharashtra. So in different, so this is a tribal village, for example, and they saw that uh, at the point of care, there was an acute need for uh, diagnostics, uh, which could be, be which could basically be used by the ASHA worker, by the health worker. 
and that meant it had to be very simple it could not have too many uh, uh, pricks it could, could it could not have too many components it could not be expensive it could not have you know a large form factor uh, it should have power requirements which are suited and so forth so what we eventually ended up building over uh, a, a three year uh, journey is is the touch b so i'll give you a little bit more on on that so i'll actually let me start by uh, just giving a quick demo of this so this particular machine it has a uh, embedded electronics inside it but the critical part of this is right here the sensor the way it works is if you put it across your finger it will pass different wavelengths of light through it there is a, a three different wavelengths of, set, uh, of of leds there and a light sensor on the other side a diode so when i switch it on in about a minute it will uh, calculate my blood hemoglobin so i just select hemoglobin here and in about a minute it will give hemoglobin now why is this important it's important because in a setting like this uh, hemoglobin is especially crucial to figure out uh, the anemia the treatment uh, the treatment cycle effectiveness of anemia so in uh, and again that's a specific need to an indian kind of context you have uh, you have uh, clinics in these kind of settings who would uh, need very active monitoring of anemia but not have access to this kind of diagnostic so that's what we wanted to do so right now you can see if i have to have more spinach or not let me see but uh, uh, in about 15 seconds now but uh, what we are trying to do is make tools like this which could really uh, you know change the way healthcare works in india that said why i am here is uh, today here is for a reason slightly different i will come to that soon but i am trying to figure out if apart from a medical medical diagnostic if there are other applications for technologies like this and some of which we came across by by accident uh, so i'll just wait for my result yeah. so here it is my result is 14 grams per deciliter so this is uh, considered uh, healthy in uh, in males so that's fine i guess so that's as simple as that so there is no medical training required now uh, okay coming back to the, the particular application which we have so far we have deployed is at different clinics for a for like i said a healthcare screening and monitoring application but what happened is that uh, organizations which are active in nutrition so they are they are conducting uh, micronutrient uh, uh, fortification they are conducting uh, change in behavior they are they are they are training people to incorporate uh, healthier food foods into their diet as well as uh, into the into the actual uh, practices used in cultivation so higher iron iron fortified rice for example and think initiatives like that these some of these organizations came up to us and said hey we are doing this amazing campaigns we are doing this amazing programs and we have these training sessions and we have uh, you know projects that last months and many times years but what we would love to have is a very quantitative impact assessment methodology which is both you know something usable and affordable so cost effective for the project i said hey wh wh why can't you assess impact you you are spending uh, x amount of rupees or dollars on a project why can't you have uh, you know your current method uh, assess impact so in terms of livelihoods increased in terms of uh, health health status improved and that's exactly what they came up to me said that yes we can do that but in many times a survey methodology which we use is lagging behind the the actual project by many uh, months so basically for example if i have an iron fortified rice kind of training module which is happening in in jharkhand uh, we would have uh, the survey which assesses how impactful has that campaign been only takes place 3 4 5 months with latency of that magnitude and therefore uh, the 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 real impact is not really assessed so they said why can't you use this kind of technology uh, to have very rapid very cheap because there's no pricking no blood no medical uh, expertise required very cheap uh, just a surveyor with a machine quickly going through the whole geography and assessing 300 people in 3 days uh, that kind of impact just not even after the project but during cycles of the project so in phase 1 of the project phase 2 of the project so i said yeah this is interesting so this is not a healthcare application this is an impact assessment application not so not something which i was familiar with or had even thought about so that's that's how i came across this world and i think the probably the audience in in this campus and in this hall would have a much better understanding of impact assessment than i would so that's why i'm here would love to talk more about that uh, so 
that be is so, so this is for example one of the interesting things we did after hearing of all this we realized that more than the technology the data was of value so the sensor which we have uh, here you would have uh, this device so this i like i said this is the critical part the sensor which goes on the finger now the data which is generated need not be locked inside the device it could be anywhere uh, using the internet anywhere and that's the power which i see with from the impact assessment perspective from for something like this what we did is we connected the sensor to an android mobile phone through bluetooth so this uh, this talks to a mobile phone via bluetooth and uh, once the data is on the phone whenever there is internet access it uh, sends it uh, uh, through the web to a back end the thing is once it's at the back end it can be uh, it's a gis so you have gps data and you have hemoglobin data of a large population so that particular thing can be mapped think of uh, think of uh, uh, say a particular uh, horticultural initiative which has uh, which has changed the agricultural practices and to some extent consumer behavior of purchasing and using particular uh, say food stuffs in diet how do you assess impact over a 6 month period do a first a a baselining what was the kind of map of hemoglobin before in 6 months time do a second map which is post uh, post intervention uh, how what has what has changed in that geography so this kind of mapping we started uh, you know building the uh, infrastructure for and uh, the, it's, it's really not that difficult because the difficult part in my from my perspective is the hardware the sensor the data itself there are now various uh, free and open source uh, uh, platforms available and again this is an area i am assuming this audience would have great familiarity with familiarity with gis and things like that uh, where once that data is unlocked once that data of hemoglobin and gps is available you can from a healthcare perspective either plug it into a electronic health record system or from an impact assessment perspective plug it into the same project database which you are using uh, on a on, on ongoing basis to implement the project so this is the kind of things uh, which which were happening and uh, we are now working uh, on this project this particular project we are working with uh, with an organization called uh, gain global alliance for improved nutrition it's a swiss foundation which is doing these kind of projects in various geographies uh, but again in india i have seen that many such pro- amazingly good initiatives exist many of them i'm sure from this particular institutions set of institutions and i would love to see if if there is some uh, particular impact assessment uh, uh, component which could be worked out in a in a you know in a, in a in a spectacularly rapid way which is what we like doing that that's a little bit about touch be um, and uh, again would love to i have a, a session later on where i'd love to take more pointed feedback on this but uh, i'll move on to the second piece so this is one project we did well we we actually raised raised venture funding for this product set up a team in mumbai uh, you know all, all that what happened is that at a later stage due to another project which we had with the indian institute of technology bombay we ended up developing a second technology and uh, this was uh, uh, relatively recently last year where we realized that uh, this combination of non invasive so don't prick and point of care where you are right where the problem is in the, in the middle of the field there is another possibility to uh, to you know do diagnostics in a simple cheap and affordable uh, in a, in an effective way and that's led to something called u check uh, this is a, a re- really interesting uh, little application and a much simpler application i, I must admit than this to both smartphones what it does is it uses a phone to analyze urine now that's a bit <laughs> it, it 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 it's it sounds a little bit magical but it's not it's a, it's a really uh, pragmatic and simple technology what what i am i am going to show you is initially how uh, what is already the state of the art this is something called a uh, urine dipstick so these are uh, pieces of uh, paper basically which have been impregnated with well, which have pads which have been impregnated with specific chemicals oops so these are completely disposable and you can throw them away like i almost did there you have uh, this one for example is a 10 parameter uh dipstick from a uh, large multinational company it measures 10 parameters so you would have uh, these test pads each of them uh with a different chemical and they change color when they in contact with specific chemicals so in this case uh, this particular uh, uh, t- test strip actually measures uh, leucocytes nitrites urobilinogen 
proteins, pH, bilirubin, specific gravity, ketones and glucose. So now uh, all of these parameters are, uh, are, are present in, the, in, say in, in specific uh, conditions. So for example, if I have a urinary tract infection, I would have leukocytes in my urine. Uh, and so this is all it takes really to, 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 to assess that. Uh, we, we thought this was wonderful. This, this particular technology is about four decades old. It's, it's been around a while. It's, uh, it's very generic basically. There are multiple, many companies who make this. Uh, so we thought, hey, what's, why, why is this not being used more? This is such a powerful thing. And in fact, you can, I would invite, I would, I would not, uh, you are happy to try it out. But basically, small changes in diet, small changes uh, even in, uh, so uh, I just had lunch. If I don't have water in next six hours and I test my urine with this, I will get uh, signs of the, uh, you, I will get, I can actually show that I have not had water for the next six, uh, for the six hours. This, this is the sensitivity of many of these systems. It's, it's really cool. We thought, why is it not being used? The answer is that it's really difficult to assess uh, assess the readings visually. So if I look at the, the manufacturer of these strips would typically have a chart like this provided. Uh, so like, like it's being shown there, a user has to visually compare the color. And not only that, compare it according to time. So once it has been dipped in urine, uh, you would wait for 30 seconds and then over the next two minutes, one by one, different strips would start changing color slowly and each of them have to be measured at a specific time. So for example, uh, in this chart, it's instructing me to look at glucose after 30 seconds, bilirubin after 30 seconds, ketone after 40 seconds, specific gravity after 45 seconds and, and so forth. So at the, at the very end of the line, I have leukocytes after 120 seconds. Now, this is something which is uh, possible to do for a trained lab technician with a lot of concentration, but typically there are two problems. One is the time and then the other is the assessment, subjective assessment of the change in color. So I am supposed to match it and look at the timer and note it down. Uh, so it's a bit, usability is a problem. So that's why visually it's a problem. Now what has happened is labs uh, realized that and so labs came up. Uh, with an automatic reader. So you have the same com kind of companies who make the uh, make the, uh, the di di dipstick, the strip. They also make proprietary readers. So there is like a large lab machine, maybe the size of uh, this table. Or some, some of the smaller ones may be the size of this laptop. They would have a, an optical reader inside embed in, through an embedded uh, system. You would put it inside the uh, system. I don't know if I have a picture of those here. Uh, yeah. So maybe not the picture, but I don't want to confuse things with too many brands, but basically that kind of reader would, would use a white LED. Many of them use white LED and reflectance to essentially artificially, through an artificial eye, you can say, to assess color. It's a colorimetric sensor. Uh, so this is technology we looked at closely and said, hey, is this something which a phone can't do? And the, the fascination from our perspective was that a smartphone, by the way, this is before I jump into smartphones, this are, these are 25 plus conditions which this lowly and humble humble piece of paper can actually diagnose. Uh, you have uh, everything from UTIs, which I mentioned, urinary tract infections, to cirrhosis, hepatitis, the, uh, specific type of anemia, malaria, preeclampsia. Oh, preeclampsia is super important in developing world, uh, something like that. Then you would have uh, uh, some. I mean, at the very end, you would even have some some part. So cancers would cause, uh, say, bleeding, very micro micro amount of bleeding, which would only be possible to diagnose uh, using, uh, you know, urine analysis samples. So this is the kind of things. And the, the range is quite impressive for, I must admit, a very small, very, very cheap piece of technology. This is like 10 rupees. So that's the fascination, the motivation for looking at this very closely. Okay, that's the first part. Second part, back to the smartphone story, right? So we looked at different types of strips. So there are multiple, like I said, n number of manufacturers, each have their own shape, form factor, chemicals, colors, sequence, everything is different. And each have their own machine. So each arrow here corresponds to a machine and there are maybe 20, 30, 40, I don't know how many different types of uh, strips and manufacturers. So uh, there is no inter intercompatibility and therefore it is not uh, really viable for a lab to have uh, all kinds of diagnostics possible because it cannot have all kinds of strips. It can only have some types of readers. That's the economics behind why this is not, this powerful clinical technology is not, uh, I think, uh, more widely used than it is. So what I realized is that let's have a universal reader, 
a reader that reads everybody and that's possible only if i use smartphones that's our assessment of it so we we came up with uh, essentially a, an application which can read almost any kind of dipstick uh, we have uh, this working right i have it working right now here so i i won't do a urine test but i can uh, if anybody of you are drinking soda or anything like that i can actually check components of say glucose and so forth constituents in that uh, we can do that over the tea break i guess but let me show you how a little bit of a demo of how how in principle how this thing uh, works out Uh, so this is the dipstick like i said this is the phone the phone has a camera it can it can assess the color what what complicates things is that now look at this there is a yellow light here when i am outside there will be sunlight uh, in another room there will be fluorescent lighting so we needed a way to standardize ambient lighting uh, we do that through two mechanisms one is through uh, this particular uh, piece of uh, well calibrated plastic which which we call the color mat it has a uh, uh, some standardized colors on the top so these are supposed to be uh, reference colors for our software what we do is once once this particular uh, dipstick has been used we put it right here on the on the mat uh, this is this is important because like i said the ambient lighting uh, uh, should not be able to interfere that is the first level of uh, correction we do okay so this is done now uh, we keep it here preferably again we try to standardize we would like to have a white background so i'll just borrow uh, hemant's uh, white background here so this is a standard piece of paper i would place it here let me just place it on a table here so it's easier to manipulate uh, sure that will be useful right uh, meanwhile i'll uh, switch on the app i'll run you through uh, i mean the app a uh, little bit can i so this is a app which is there on an iphone we are making it for android soon what what it does is like i said it will look through, look at this strip through the camera and then give out this kind of result what we also wanted to do is over that 2 2 minute time frame not have uh, uh, you know shaky hands or any kind of vibration of the phone affect the accuracy so what we ended up building is a, a, entirely this is a semi automated urine analyzer something which would have cost like in the hundreds of uh, hundreds of dollars maybe uh, 10000 dollars or so i've i've seen a few like that this is a, a few rupees basically this is uh, this is a disposable uh, dis dipstick and this is a reusable uh, urine analyzer uh, system so what this is a piece of plastic in which uh, which which we can ship to any location uh, in the world basically through a postal system and it can be assembled right on site just like a children's origami uh, toy i'll just try to assemble it here it will actually end up becoming a box something like that the whole uh, as you can guess our whole teams objective is always to reduce the cost of something so that a country like uh, india especially it becomes uh, viable and that's the economics at play which apart from the science is i think equally important for adoption of any kind of technology so this is really the simplest of simple technologies paper and plastic essentially uh, which can be used to make a machine of considerable complexity so you would have now a box like this so this is this is actually the urine analyzer this is substituting for a very complicated electronic machine which costs a few hundred dollars uh and uh, so you would have instructions here how to use it you have assembled it you keep it on top of this right and then the phone just there's a whole like i said there's a hole here uh, through which the phone's camera can actually uh, peep through right that's how you do it so i'll i'll actually switch on the app uh, there's an app called you check so i can select i can actually select uh, my dipstick so i have a particular brand a company so i can select that uh, then i'll click start it will give me some instructions how to use it and it will take me to the camera now the camera is something of course like i said which we are using to change check the uh, change in color so we keep it here center it and go so it it will take exactly the same time that a strip takes 
two minutes and it will give you the result. So, this is a sample result page, it will come up on the screen, we can like I said have fun with uh, checking how much glucose is there in the soft drink which we drink today, but uh, and, and a urine test as well if anybody is game. But uh, in general we are very pretty, pretty optimistic that these kind of technologies could have a huge impact in healthcare. Think of the, think of that list of 25 diseases and now it is possible to diagnose a lot of that powerful kind of diagnostic is now possible using just that apparatus here. We have now it's on the iPhone. We are also trying to see if we can make it available for every phone. That would be awesome. No, no, that's my healthcare passion. Coming back, what I also again realized is I talked to a few people at uh, uh, at some geological uh, societies, foundations, who are looking at other issues, and it, it's completely accident through forums like this where disciplines collide. Uh, what I realized is that. Urine is one particular uh, solution in which there are so many things, but uh, around the world, around domains, there are so many solutions in which so many uh, chemicals are, are uh, you know useful to test for. Water, in water uh, uh, arsenic or different types of metals uh, are very very important. So, in across India you have this problem, so in West Bengal and eastern parts you would have arsenic, in, in other, other states you have some specific problems. So, you would have uh, this kind of uh, uh, testing possible again using test strips. Similarly, uh, I even talked to somebody from NASA who was interested in uh, look, taking this to the moon essentially uh, to, to check for uh, right there at the very something very light which could check right there at the point of uh, testing. So, these kind of interesting applications of which I must completely admit I have no clue. I am not a domain expert in every application. What I would love to do is again engage in a dialogue to, to figure out whether there are similar test strips in other domains. So, not just in healthcare, but uh, say in agriculture I can think of uh, pH being important and of course, it is being measured, but are there any other so nitrites for example, this system does measure. Uh, so, what, what is possible technically and then even more importantly, what is most impactful economically for the people uh, whose life it will change? That is the question which I am really interested in answering. That is a little bit you know a background. So, I will uh, what I will do right now is uh, if, if, if this is sort of clear, I will just uh, jump ahead uh, and uh, start the dialogue. One last point, of course, like I said the software once once data is on the software, it is easy to store it, view it as a trend, send it, you know use it in, in a powerful way and that is powerful way is what I am trying to figure out what does it mean for different domains. That is a little bit about it. So, what I have done uh, is little bit of a roller coaster here from my side, uh, but <laughs> what I will do right now is if if all of you uh, do not mind these slightly unstructured questions which I raised during my uh, rambling talk, I would love to structure them and take each of your opinions, each of your individual opinions and try to figure out if there is something interesting that is possible. What I have done for that is I have created a survey for those of you who are uh, online uh, with us. Uh, please do uh, uh, join, uh, uh, click on this link, it is called uh, uh, tinyurl.com slash decreasat survey. So, that is t i n y u r l dot c o m uh, slash i c r i s a t s u r v e y. What I am trying to figure out is for both touch B and for UCheck, what are the interesting alternative applications, what are the interesting projects, what are the interesting possibilities which could have an impact. Uh, for those who are here, I have a much more clever technology piece of paper, which I still like I said I am a big fan of paper. So, I will give you a handout these for now uh, and uh, if you could spare 5 minutes, I will uh, would really appreciate your uh, feedback on this, your ideas on this and then we will have a much more interactive session. I have a few extra.
just for reference, in case the net wasn't working. Yeah, we should test. We can have a test for everybody if you're here. Please. Okay. Oh, you have a lower hemoglobin. Lower, yeah. Yeah. This one we have been selling to clinics at 12,500 rupees. They charge like 10 to 20 rupees per test. That's the model, like a Xerox machine. Yeah. to be good because it has to take the picture. So, but uh, software we have developed for Apple phones and next month we'll have it for Android. Maybe maybe uh, Windows or Blackberry if, if after that. But it's interesting that something like this is possible without any big machine. <laughs> the sensitive system to different wavelengths of light Test you now. There you go. So for one minute. So there's no, uh, like I said, there's no uh, prick, there's no needles. So that's the, that's the part which uh, is, I think, most people like. But I was like. Okay. The soil testing is a major uh, thing, and it takes ages. Uh, soil has to be collected, brought to the center, and uh, results have to go back and analyze. So, is it possible to test any micronutrients uh, of soil? Micronutrients. So I think. I was just thinking. So uh, anything which is soluble uh, and can be, the volume can be standardized in some way. There are, uh, I think, uh, many commercially available strips, which are then possible to use. Once once it is solvable, it, it is detectable in a strip, like the one which we have here. So like a strip like this. Uh, so this strip depends on, on having a known concentration. Well, not no, but, but in urine, that, that's the, what we are trying to find is the concentration of X substance, right? But say in, in the case of I'm thinking soil, just off the top of my head, I can think of say a known number of grams or uh, something of soil, known volume of water, uh, mix it together well, and then maybe if some uh, some particular compounds are water soluble, they will come up. If it's some, instead of water, if we use say some turpentine or something else which dissolves some other component, then we can do a second and third test for specific things. I think that would be pretty interesting. Iron for, is nitrogen in, so it's nitrites in urine are possible, for example, using this strip. We should test it right now, in fact. We can <laughs> take some soil, see if nitrites are uh, possible to detect. I am assuming they will be, because even, uh, even uh, say, oh, let's see if it learns. Ah, there you go, it's 14. Yeah. You are fine, Eman, don't worry. <laughs> cool. Any other uh, ideas? Hemoglobin, come on over. So typically, uh, uh, males for males, or please have a seat. Typically, males would have a uh, uh, in the range of 14, and typically, females would have uh, about 12 or so. Yeah, there you go. So you can just 
just keep it and I'm say even relaxed. Yes. Uh, we we sell, sold it to clinics in India at 12,500 rupees. So the model which uh, for the last year they have been uh, doing is they buy it from us and then they charge 10 to 20 rupees per test uh, to their patients. Typically they have like anywhere between 10 to 30 patients depending on how big the clinic is per day. So it's like a Xerox machine you can think of it. It's there in their setup and it's being uh, used every day. Another model which we are trying to figure out is if a mobile, truly mobile model is possible where the health worker herself actually goes on a scooter or cycle to different areas. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully that will, you know, we'll increasingly get data not just on, on, we have a clinical study on the efficacy, accuracy against blood tests. But I think, like I said, the economics of it really will come in after a say, period of 18 to 24 months when these clinics, both government and private, start giving data of, of this nature. That what is uh, more uh, impactful in terms of dollars spent per, uh, per life improvement. Is it staying in a clinic or and having the you know campaign bring the patient into the clinic or is it taking this out into the field? I don't know. I don't really don't know the answer to that one. <laughs> but hopefully that data will come out with that answer. Uh, it's 14 as well. We can have one of the ladies talk. Then we'll. Uh, <laughs> so your uh, gentleman here is also fine. Oh, so this is a, it is this hand, yes. So nail polish uh, interferes with this, so that's bad. I'll, I'll try the ring finger. So nail polish and henna or any kind of correction will affect uh, because it will affect the wavelength. Just re keep it relaxed. Okay, so we'll just select hemoglobin. This actually also doubles up as a pulse oximeter. So it can measure oxygen and heart rate as well, which is common. I mean, oxygen and heart rate measuring tools are available. So we, when we started developing this, that's what we looked at. In 2010, we looked at how oxygen is measured and the same machines which in every Bollywood movie are there, you know, the clip on the finger and then it's connected to the big ICU monitor. So <laughs> then that machine measures oxygen. Why can't you measure, say, hemoglobin, which is something very, very closely associated with oxygen in blood? These are the questions uh, the doctors in my team started asking. And then slowly, uh, in frustration, they became also electronics engineers as they tried to figure out answers to those. Five more seconds. Yeah, yours is 13 grams per deciliter. It's pretty healthy. Anything about 12 is uh, healthy for a uh, for adult uh, female. 20 rupees, yes. <laughs> Good one. Uh, this particular machine gives a uh, hemoglobin, oxygen, pulse, and temperature. I think sugar is a particularly large problem for like I think uh, 300 million plus people in the world, right? But uh, that's coming. I mean, a lot of research is going on in different parts of the world. Hopefully, we'll have something from some of the teams coming up. Well, interestingly, HIV directly, I mean, it's difficult, but uh, uh, hemoglobin is the first, first uh, parameter which goes down with any kind of say cancer or abnormalities in body because yeah. it's the it's the RBC. It will it'll start the, the white blood cells will start essentially attacking and reducing hemoglobin in blood. So it's an early warning sign of something which is wrong, but we don't know what it is. Then for, for understanding what is really wrong, it's a full CBC or a full blood full blood count with a, a specialist and all that. This is like the like the pad in a batsman. It's the first line of defense. <laughs> cool. Uh,
anyway I, i think i'll go through your responses as well and if i'll happy to get back to you and otherwise uh, we can always chat uh, informally right yeah. any any other uh, anything a uh, measuring sorry i didn't measure calories so uh maybe not so this the hemoglobin itself is doesn't unlike glucose it doesn't change uh, so during the day it it has a latency of a few weeks it two three weeks maybe four weeks before it really changes uh, but i'm thinking of for the urine analysis system a uh, few applications we have been uh, uh, piloting uh, have been related to hi- hydration state or thing like that not directly cal- calories because uh, i think calories would be interesting glucose is something which is simple to measure but again glucose it's not really the same as calories cool yeah should we wrap up okay yeah th- thanks again for all of you it was fun Thank you, Rich uh, Mishkin, and thanks everybody to have come along. Now we'll uh, go and have some tea and uh, have some informal. Uh,